Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to remake the synth patches from the intro of Church's Gun. Uh, I'm going to be doing these videos on a regular basis on different sounds, songs, techniques, and stuff like that. And I'm taking requests. So if there's something you want to learn about, just click the link at the top of this video. It'll take you to the Centorial website's tutorials page. And on the right side, there's a forum where you can submit a tutorial request. Type it in, send it, and I may cover it in a future video. On this page, you'll see this video along with many others. Check them out while you're there. And below each video, there's a download link where you can get the presets and MIDI files from the video. And if you want to be notified when a new video comes out, just scroll down to the bottom of the page and sign up for our newsletter. Lastly, while you're there, check out the free Centorial demo, which comes with 22 free synth lessons. Centorial is synthesizer training software that teaches you how to program synths and design sound all by ear using videos and interactive challenges. So check it out. So, for this video, we're going to be using mostly donationware and free plugins, all except one. And whenever I open a new plugin, a link will appear at the top of the video so that you can go and get it. So now let's listen to the finished patches before we start building them from the ground up. So, starting with the bass, we're going to use a Moog. The guys in churches use vintage hardware synths like Moog, Juno 106, Prophet. So, I decided to use emulators of those plug of those uh, synths. So, I'm starting with the Moog, and this is the one synth plugin that I'm using that isn't free. It's made by Arturia. However, there is a free one for Windows users, and you can check that out, Mini Moog VA, and that's a link at the top of the video. Uh, for those of you, for Mac users, uh, that's a pretty simple patch, actually, so you can use any synth to follow along. So starting with the Moog, we're going to reset it so that it's just plain old saw wave. Where is that? Right here. We want to use a medium with pulse wave. And we want to bring it down two octaves. Good. And then we're going to bring in the second oscillator, turning it on. This is going to be one octave above the first. It's also going to be a medium with pulse wave. And we're going to turn up just a little bit. It's just going to add a little bit of high end. And then we're going to detune it down a little bit. And this is going to add a, just a touch of movement, a little bit of thickness to the sound. It's pretty uh, subtle. Just adds a little thickness to the sound, but it keeps that nice solid single oscillator sound as well. Next, we're going to bring our cutoff down to get a rounder tone. About there. And then we want to use the filter envelope to give it an attack. So we want the sound to start bright and immediately get down to this nice round point. So we turn up our contour to determine that, that bright starting point. So it's not that much brighter, just a little bit. It's going to be another subtle effect. Now, the way envelopes work is uh, they start at this contour and they go down to the sustain level. Sustain level of zero is the same as your cutoff frequency. And that's what we want. We want to start from this brightness that our contour knob gave us and make its way down to the cutoff frequency. So we turn our sustain all the way down. And here's what it sounds like. Now these are short notes, so it's not moving from contour to cutoff quick enough. So we're going to bring our decay time down to make that happen faster. So without contour.
So it gives our sound a nice shape. And lastly, we don't want the note to cut off so abruptly when we let go of the key. It, it, is, it definitely cuts off quickly, but when it's this abrupt, it sort of sounds unnatural. So we're going to increase it just a little bit. Now on the Moog, the decay stage of your uh, amp envelope is also determines your release stage. So we just turn up the decay time. It's a little subtler, but it gives it a more natural sound. It also kind of fattens the sound up a bit, because when you cut it off, you just have that short, distinct note. When you have a little bit of a tail, it just sort of gives the impression of more sound. It's kind of a nice little trick. So that's your basic synth sound. It's a real simple, typical bass patch, but it's kind of puny. So we're going to add some overdrive, some tube distortion. So we're going to go to Tal plugin here, grab the Tal tube effect. By default, you don't hear much. So what we want to do is increase the input. We want to send more of our signal, more of our synth into this thing. So we're driving the the tubes harder, getting more of that rich warmth out of them. And then the distortion itself, we want that to be as nasty as we can make it, so we're turning the drive up all the way. And that gave us quite a boost in volume, so we'll bring the output down a little bit. And then we want, uh, this gives you the option of a hard distortion, make it more aggressive and edgy, so we'll turn that on. Nice, so, so we beefed up the synth a little bit and we made it kind of angry. Now we want to make it even fatter. So we're going to bring in a compressor and I'm not going to use a typical compressor with, you know, attack, release, threshold, ratio, and all that stuff. Because all I really want is just a nice fatness from it. I just want to change the sound a bit. And I love the Camel Crusher plugin for that. This also has a distortion, a filter, all that. We just want the compressor. So I'm turning the distortion off. And by default, the compressor's on. It's turned up pretty high, and the fat mode's engaged, which we want. So that's off. On. Fat mode off. On. So it kind of squashes it, it smears it, and it thickens it. We're going to back it off a little bit, though. So we have a nice fat, angry bass. And we just want to add a little bit of low end. So I'm just going to bring in... Ableton's EQ, you can use any EQ for this, it's pretty simple. We just want a shelf. We want a frequency of 155. And we'll turn up the gain. Without. So as that nice bottom end, just make sure you use a shelf because by default you use a sort of peak but a shelf will just really raise up the whole low end. And that's your bass patch. I'm going to turn it down a little bit so that when we bring in the high end, or the lead, it doesn't overpower it. Next, the lead. For this, we're going to use another Tal plugin. Tal plugins are great, and uh, almost all of them are donation words. You can download them for free, but I, if you like them, I recommend, uh, you know, donating to the guy because he does an awesome job with his plugins or buying one of his premium plugins. Uh, let's see, where is it? So this one is an emulation or it's inspired by the Juno 60. And the Juno 106, which is a different synth, used by the Church's guys. And uh, I chose this synth, which is similar to that one in its sound, uh, for a particular reason, which I'll get to in a second. First things first, we want mono. And we're going to turn off this sub wave. We just want a nice single saw wave. 
Now we want to add a tail to it because the note's cutting off right away, but we want the note to ring out after we let go of the key. So we turn on the envelope, the amp envelope, and we increase our release. Let's see. Good. And we don't want any uh, filter envelope. So we're going to turn the envelope all the way down for that. And then we're going to bring the frequency down, the cutoff, to make the sound a little rounder. Now, if you compare that to the actual sound, it's much rounder. Um, that's because we're going to add a distortion plugin later on. That's going to sort of re-brighten it back up. The distortion adds its, adds its own brightness. So we make this a little bit rounder to sort of create a palette for the distortion. Now, lastly is the chorus. And this is why I chose this synth. In the Juno lines of synths, like the 60 and the 106, they had these choruses built into them. And they're kind of a signature aspect of these synths. They're really simple. They're just basically on and off buttons. You can't really tweak anything, but they had a very distinct sound. Um, and that's why I chose this, because it sounds like they're using those choruses. So we're actually going to engage both of them. So it widens it, gives it that sort of subtle instability, which is really important for this track. Next, we're going to compress it, make it nice, big, and fat. And again, we're going to use Camel Crusher. Turn off distortion. And we're going to crank the compression. That made it a lot louder, so let's bring the volume down. Now we're also going to add some distortion. And I liked the distortion from the Camel Crusher plugin for this. Problem is, is it goes into the distortion and then the compressor. And after messing around with it a lot, I found that I wanted the reverse effect. I wanted to compress it first and then distortion. The reason is, is because that chorus in the, the synth makes a really unstable sound. It makes it kind of louder, softer, louder, softer. The volume fluctuates and it moves around. And when you run that into this really fat, hard-hitting compressor, it, the two sort of fight. The compressor fights the chorus, and you get that really unstable sound. And it's kind of a signature aspect of this patch. So I definitely wanted the compressor right after the synth. So instead of just using the distortion within this instance of the plugin, I'm going to bring in another Camel Crusher and use this distortion. So it goes compressor, then distortion. Turn off the compressor. Crank the tube effect. So this is like a nice warm distortion. And then to really give it some more nasty edge, we're going to use the mech distortion. Turn it up halfway. That's really loud. So let's turn it down. Next is delay. Go back to our TAL plugins. TAL Dub 3 plugin. Now, this plugin is cool because it uh, not only does it you know, do the regular delay stuff, but it sort of emulates old school analog delays that uh, they, they would saturate your sound. So if you drove them hard enough, you get that sort of compression ish sort of distortion effect like we have. Now, that's cool and everything, but we already got that through our Camel Crusher plugin. So we're going to turn the drive down a bit so we get a nice clean delay. And then we want the delays louder, more of the delays, so we're going to turn our wet up. We want it to be synced, the delays, for an eighth note. Now this plugin's got a cool feature where you can change just the one of the delays, the right or left. You can make it twice as fast with these times two buttons. So like right now, the left delay is an eighth note, but the right delay is a sixteenth note. 
we don't want that. We already have a nice wide stereo signal going in, so we just want one set of delays going down the middle that are just as wide as the synth. So we turn that off. And then these low cut and high cut allow you to sort of shape the uh, delay sound with filters, but we don't want that either. We want no high cut, no low cut. So we turn the low cut down, high cut up, and now we get the full sound being delayed. And then we'll lower the feedback just to make it a little shorter. Last, we're going to add some ambience, or sorry, some reverb. I'm using this free ambience plugin. Um, you can use any reverb plugin, it's pretty, pretty simple. Number one, our drag gain's at zero right now, so all we're going to hear is the reverb sound. But we don't want that. So now we have our dry. And then our wet's too high. We just want a little, not so obvious, so. And that's your sound. Now there's one important note I want to show you. That is, looking down here at these MIDI notes, each phrase is about eight notes long. I'm going to play this twice as slowly so you can hear it. Now, since it's mono, every time you play a new note, it cuts the previous ones off. So you get these two high notes, then that gets cut off by these two low notes. High notes cut off by the low notes. But in the actual patch, the high notes kind of ring out. So I separated them up here. Pair of high notes, pair of low notes. Pair of high notes, pair of low notes. You have the, the patch, exactly the same patch on both tracks, but now they're separate, so the high notes ring out while the low notes are playing. Back to this guy. Other guy. And this allowed me to turn the low down a little bit so that the highs were a little bit more dominant than the lows. Uh, now you might be wondering why didn't I just use one synth and make it polyphonic? And the problem is, is yes, if I change it to say six voices, now they'll all ring out over each other. But since I'm ringing through distortion, when those voices stack on top of each other, they push the distortion and the compressor really hard. So it's uneven. If I'm playing a single note, it sounds right. But if I play multiple notes at once, which polyphonic with long releases will do, then it pushes the distortion and compression too hard. So stick with mono voice and just split them into two. And now all together. Ooh. Thanks for watching. And again, if you have any requests, just click the link at the top of this video. Go to our tutorials page and sign our mailing list and check out this tutorial demo. Thanks for watching.